Okay, so imagine that we have some reaction and it's going to go from reactants over here to products over here. Now, the reactants are gonna have some energy favorability and the products are gonna have some energy favorability. And let's imagine that they both have the same favorability. So right now they have the same strength. So if I were to put one of them each in solution and I were to let them mix, what would happen was eventually they'd reach an equilibrium where there would be like equal amounts of both of those. So we can think about them both kind of being pulling evenly on this strand. But now let's imagine that you are gonna be a lot weaker. So now you only have one hand that's holding on. So now what's gonna happen if we mix together equal amounts of them? Now pull on your string. Both of you pull on your string and you're pulling tighter. So like actually walk backwards, yeah. So basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna be pulled towards our products if our products are more stable. And so if our products are more stable, what does that say about our delta G? Not. Delta G is gonna be negative. Yeah, our delta G is gonna be negative. And if we let things go to equilibrium and instead of having one and one, um, we, have, we would have more of the products than we would have of the reactants. Now let's imagine though that we add um, oh wait, you, you're supposed to be the weak one, sorry. Oh yeah, so we go over here, okay, that all works out. Okay, but now, okay, you guys come over here to the other side. You're gonna help him out. You're good. So now instead of starting with one to one of them, we have a bunch of these weaklings, no offense. When we have a bunch of these weaklings and they're each holding on, well now what's gonna happen is that they're gonna be able to pull the reaction towards, the, in the opposite direction, towards the reactant. So our inherent like favorability, they're each equal, equal. Each of them is equal and she's equal, but they're not equal to one another. She's a lot more favorable, but we have these ones that are kind of like able to, the concentration is able to overcome things. So this is why we can have like a delta G naught prime, which is telling us like the inherent favorability, like if we mix them one to one, where would things end up? They'd end up over there. But if we're not one to one, if we have a bunch more of these, then you can overcome it. But now let's imagine that each of them only has their finger on there. Only one finger. And now what's gonna happen is that that is not gonna be enough to overcome her force. <gasps> So if we have a really big, if we have a really big difference between our products and our reactants, if we have a really big negative um, delta G not prime, it's gonna take like an infinite number of our weaklings in order to pull it back. We're not gonna be able to regulate that based on concentration. So instead we need to regulate it by when we give the go signal. Okay, so if we have, we can go back to just having a one-to-one, -one. it's fine. Thank you. Okay, so now before I kind of, you just kind of went, but now imagine that we, instead of like, I, like when you say go, what is it, what determines when you say go? Well, what determines when you say go is your activation barrier. And so you could be, have things that were way, way, way more favorable than other things, but you don't have the match to ignite things. You don't have enough energy to get over the barrier in order to get to the other side. Yes, theoretically, if you mix these things and waited long enough, you could have that happen. You could randomly have all those pieces come together in the right way. But instead, typically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have enzymes that are gonna be able to help out. They're gonna lower the transition state. They're not gonna change the amount that I would end up with if I had these two together. They're not gonna change the amounts of each of the products and the reactants that I'm gonna end up with at the end. But they can make it so that basically it's going to be a lot easier to get there. And if it's a lot harder to get backwards, then it's going to be a lot harder to go the other way. But if I never say go, she's not going to pull. And so if we never say go, we're not going to have that reaction happen, even if it's super duper favorable. So by regulating when we say go, by using enzymes that are able to lower the activation area barrier, they're able to basically say go then we're able to drive these reactions forward. And then once we have those reactions driven forward, go, go. Once we have that, well now it's really, really hard to get back because we saw when we had, even when we had a bunch of them holding on, they weren't able to overcome things. So that would be like an irreversible step in metabolism. So nothing is truly irreversible, but if the difference in free energy is so great, then you're not able to overcome it based on concentration alone. In the cases where they're equal pullers, 
Well, here, our little differences in concentration would make a big deal. So if we have two of these, two people, even if these have the exact same energy as one another, if we start with two of them, we're gonna end up pulling that direction until equilibrium is reached again. And so basically, you're gonna get the final thing, but you can, same final amounts, but if at, in that moment we have more over here, well now we're able to drive the reaction. So in these reactions that are running near equilibrium, the products and the reactants are kind of like equally favorable. What's gonna happen is that the little bits of differences in concentration can make a big deal. And so that's why like, we can control those ones going back and forth if the delta G naught prime is pretty similar. But if we have these big differences, here, little bits of concentration isn't gonna make the big difference. It's not gonna make a drop, it's just a little drop. You can't climb all the way up that hill very easily. So instead, in those cases, we want to, we want to control when we say go. We want to do the, control the enzymes, which we can do by things like phosphorylation. We can um, quickly inactivate them. We can, on a longer scale, we can make more or we cannot make more. But as we see, like with signaling pathways, we're able to phosphorylate things and quickly have an effect. We can also kind of sequester endons in various regions and things like this so that we have them ready to go on demand. But then we control that demand, we control the go signal instead of trying to control the concentrations. And by having those reactions that drive that, well now you can drive further reactions forward. Because we said for those ones that were kind of close, little bit differences in concentration could make a big difference in terms of the actual reactions. And so if we have one pulling the others, that can help drive a whole pathway forward. Because remember that it's the concentrations, when you're close to the equilibrium steps, the concentrations are what's gonna determine which side you go to. No matter how favorable, or no matter what the difference in favorability inherently is, if they're close enough together, you can skew things in one direction or another. But if you have those big steps, those are going to be your irreversible steps, but they're gonna be powerful ways to drive the pathway forward, to drive those reactions that might have a higher, um, higher delta G, like basically they're a little, like they're, hard, they're not inherently favorable, but we can drive them forward by coupling them to other reactions, by pulling the reaction pathway forward. And that is that. Not.